Welcome back again. Today I'm going to take you through PSM web sessions using both Chrome and Edge. My name is Brad McDowell and I'm a Senior Privileged Cloud Consultant here in Australia. So today's objectives is to use the Add PSM app script to install Chrome and Edge. We'll then configure AppLocker to suit Chrome. And then I'll add in a connection component, in this case for Palo Alto Web, to suit Google Chrome. And we're using that so we can demonstrate uh, and we can test the PSM session is working to a test target using Chrome. I'll then switch over to Microsoft Edge and we'll create a connection component for the same target, but in this case, we'll be using Edge. And then we'll test the PSM web session is working to that test target of Palo Alto Web using Edge. At the end, I'll touch on the WebDriver updater, uh, which I'll do in a future video, but I'll provide the link at the end. Okay, so today's video is all about running web sessions inside a PSM session. To demonstrate it today, I've got our Palo Alto firewall in this lab, and I've got it set up so that if I log in as the Active Directory user, it will log in. So our goal today is to make network administrators use a PSM session in order to access this Palo Alto appliance. In a future video, I'll go into more detail on how we can manage the Palo Alto platform. I'll put a link here somewhere if I'm clever enough, but I'll proceed on with today's demo. The goal today is to run this web application, the Palo Alto, inside a Chrome as well as an Edge browser so you can see both examples. You'll need the Privileged Cloud tools, which you've already got on the PSM servers, and we're going to focus on using the Add PSM apps. I've also got the Palo Alto Network's PSM platform or connection component, which I'll import into the system for this demo as well. So I'm now on Connector Server 1, and I've opened up the location where we've got the Add PSM apps. I'll extract that here. And then we'll open PowerShell as administrator. And I'll open up Notepad here, and I've got a couple of commands. The Add PSM Apps script can do a lot of things. In a future video, I'll talk about how we can manage Active Directory and our custom MMC file. But today, I just want to focus on adding Google Chrome 64-bit and 32-bit for Microsoft Edge. You can do Google Chrome 32-bit as well. Uh, but in my lab, uh, I'm wanting to do Chrome 64-bit. So I'll run this command. And the script will download Chrome for us. And we'll select no on the uh, local remote desktop users group here. Great, so the script is finished. I'll show you some more steps that we need to do. I'll just take a note here as well. I didn't mention uh, I'm adding both browsers just for demonstration purposes. You don't have to select both browsers. You could do Chrome only or Edge only. So I'll clear the screen and I'll come back to this later. So from here, I'll just focus on getting Chrome up and running and then I'll focus on getting Edge up and running. So if I open up PowerShell here again and type in appwiz.cpl, we just want to check what version of Chrome we have running and it's version 116. If I go open up a browser and I'll show you where we can get the Google Chrome driver, that's the next requirement. So we get web driver for Chrome here, and then from version 115, we have to go to this link here. And if we scroll down, we need this link here, and I'll download that now. So I'll extract that here. Now I need to copy this Chrome driver to two locations on the server. So the first location is in Program Files x86, CyberArk, Password Manager. We'll continue on this, that's normal. The hardening will fix this up again. We'll go to bin and then we'll paste it here. If we go back up to CyberArk, we go to the PSM folder and we'll hit continue then components, and we'll also and continue there. And we'll also paste the file here. I'll put in the description where you need the Chrome driver, but they're the two locations. The next issue is 
the app locker hardening. So if I go back to PSM here, we go to hardening, we can find the app locker file here. I'll edit this app locker file and we'll scroll to the bottom and we'll have a Google Chrome section here. So I'll paste in this below. I'll put this in the description of what the default path of the Chrome driver is, but that's it here. Um, you can also see that Google Chrome was also allowed here this in, in the 64-bit path, as you can see there. So that's great. I'll close this and save it. I'll also check the PSM hardening here and we'll edit this. So in the hardening script at, at line 97, we can see support web applications has already been set to true and the script did this for us before. So for those who have done this before manually, um, that's done for us here. I'll now open up PowerShell as administrator. And we'll type in PSM con and hit tab. And this is the script we need to run. Great, I'll go over to the second server and repeat the same steps. I'm now on connector server two, I'll repeat the same steps here. And we'll run the same command. Type in no again. Okay, that's completed, we'll clear the screen, go app whiz. Of course, got the same version of Google Chrome here. And I'll go back to Connector Server 1 and copy the app locker script. I'm on Connector Server 1, we'll copy this. And back on Connector Server 2, I'll paste that here. So I'm replacing that file. And the reason why I did that is so I'll have the exact same settings and it keeps things consistent. So we can see the Chrome driver is here. I'm now ready to run PowerShell as administrator and then run the app locker scripts. Great, that's finished. I'll head back over to the workstation and we'll configure the Palo Alto application. So I wanna use this brad.admin account on this platform to access the Palo Alto. If we go to administration, then platform management, we'll expand out windows, and here's the platform that I'm using. So I'll click on the three dots and go manage PSM connectors, and we'll add a package here. I downloaded, earlier from the, I downloaded this earlier from the marketplace, and it's this one here. So there's a zip file, and that's got that platform there. So we'll hit save. Now that we have associated that connection component, we'll go to configuration options, We'll go to connection components and for today's demo i'm going to duplicate this because i'll delete this connection component later so we'll hit copy and we'll paste this up here and i'll rename this to palo alto web dash domain dash chrome because i'll make another one for edge this will be full screen we'll call this domain dash chrome you can call it whatever you want. We'll apply that. We'll expand our target settings first and go to web form settings. I don't have a valid certificate on the Palo Alto, so I'll select no for the enforced certificate validation. And I will hard code the address. In a future video, I can show you how this can be dynamic if you've got more than one Palo Alto firewall. We'll apply that. We'll head over to client specific and we need to add some parameters here. But I know that they are here in the Azure portal by default. So I'll go to target settings here and we'll copy the browser path and we'll paste that here along with enable trace. So now that I've got those two, we'll set the enable trace to yes so we can see what's happening when the session logs on. I'll just apply that. Go to browser path and change the browser path to the 64-bit path. And then finally, I'll come back up to the PSM RDP. We'll go to user parameters and I'll copy the allow select HTML5. This means the Chrome session will be inside a web browser tab. And we'll paste that under user parameters. 
if I go to Windows here, we'll go to the three dots here again and go manage PSM connectors. And we'll search for Palo and associate that one. You can also manage the platforms when you edit here. Go to UI workflows, connection components, and you can see the two platforms there. I'm going to remove Palo Alto Web, and uh, we can see the domain dash Chrome version is set to enabled. Yes, we'll apply that, and we'll hit OK. Just a note here: we've got the. Just to note here, we've got this pointing at connector server one for the platform. Before I can test this, we need to restart the PSM service on, on the connector server. I'll do this on both so that we can test both connector servers. So on connector server one, restart the PSM service. And on connector server two, So now we'll make a connection to the Palo Alto web using Chrome. And as you can see, the credentials are being entered for us and we're logged into the firewall. I'll test it on connector server two and we'll go to manage PSM connectors here, change to connector server two. and we'll connect again. That's great, that's logged in here also. I should also mention it is using Chrome, as you can see here. And now I'll go into the conversation of allowing Edge to work with PSM sessions. So I'll head back over to Connector Server 1, and to get Edge working, we'll need to open up a web browser and go to this URL. And we need the web driver for Edge. In this lab, I'm using version 116 for Edge. So we'll get the x86 version on the stable channel for Edge here. Now that's downloaded, I'll show that in the folder. And we'll extract that. And we'll repeat the same process as what we did with the Chrome driver. We'll go back to CyberArk here into Password Manager and the bin folder. There aren't many applications that need the edge driver here, but I'll paste it here anyway for consistency. And we'll go back to PSM, then components, and then we'll paste that here. I'll now head over to the hardening and we'll edit the app blocker file here. So edge requires the following to be allowed. I'll just scroll down to the allowed DLL section here on line 59, we'll paste that there, and then I'll scroll down to the bottom, and here's our Edge application. So the Edge application is in the right path. We need to add the Edge driver. And the last thing we need is in the Allow DLL section, and just below line 163, we'll add that in there. I'll put these paths in the description so that you can easily copy these. So I'll now close that and save it, and then we'll open up PowerShell again as administrator and we'll run PSM Configure App Locker again. That's great. I'll head over to the second server and repeat the same steps. And I'll go back to Connector Server 1 and copy the PSM Configure App Locker XML file. So run connector server two, we'll paste that here and replace the file. I'll now run the PSM configure app blocker script. That's great. I'll head back over to the workstation. So back on the workstation, we'll go to administration, then configuration options, and we'll expand our connection components and I'll duplicate the Chrome version of Palo Alto. We'll 
paste that up here. I'll rename this to Edge. We'll apply that. First, we'll go to the target settings and we need to change this to Edge. We'll apply that. I'll also expand out this and just take a note of the web form settings. It's important if you're just focusing on Edge that you've updated these um, in case you've skipped over the Chrome section. And also if we go to client specific, we've added in the browser path and enabled trace earlier. If I go to the browser path, I'll update this with the edge path by like that. And then finally, because we copied this before, uh, we've got the allow select HTML5 or HTML5 gateway settings copied from earlier. So that's all done there. So I'll hit apply on that and hit okay. We'll go back to platform management. We'll expand out windows and we'll hit manage PSM connectors. And we'll add in Palo Alto Web Domain Edge. So we'll save that. Back in the accounts view, before I can test this again, I'll go to each connector server and restart the PSM service. Let's connect to server one. And on connect to server two. Back on the workstation, we'll make a connection here and we'll try Palo Alto Web Domain Edge. And a couple of minutes have passed, so that looks like it's working now. I'll try again on Connector Server 2. And that's also working on Connector Server 2. Great, we've got the Palo Alto web working in both Chrome and Edge. You will need to think about how you will maintain the Chrome driver and Edge driver moving forward. We do have a tool in the marketplace called the Web Driver Updater. This tool compares the web driver, whether it's Chrome or Edge, and compares the version to the web browser that's installed. If it's out of sync, it will download the latest Chrome driver or Edge driver accordingly. I'll cover this in a future video. I didn't want to make this video too long and I'll put a link here somewhere once I've made that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.